Hey guys, this is Miss Harvey, and it is Thursday, April 9th, and we're going to do some writing together. For today's challenge, you just heard the song to a popular cartoon. Your job is to email me the name of the cartoon, make sure that it is the full name of the cartoon, and whoever is the third person to email me the name of this cartoon will get one extra credit point towards any subject of their teacher's choosing. So because you can't really get one extra credit point towards writing, your teacher will determine where you need an extra credit point for the week and they'll give you the extra credit for whatever subject that is. So again, the third person is the only one who will get this extra credit point third person to email me the name of the cartoon that has the theme song that just played. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start writing for today. Again, today's Thursday, April 9th, so you should have the reading and writing packet open for Thursday, April 9th. We're doing writing today based on the text that you read yesterday. And the text that you read yesterday is included in this packet. All you have to do is scroll down and you'll see that on page four, the text that you read yesterday, Coach Motivates Her Girls, both on and off the court, is included in this packet for you to be able to use. So we'll get to that in a second, but first we're gonna start with our mini lesson. So what I want you to do and make sure that you have is you're opened up to page two of this packet. And you have scratch paper and a writing utensil with you if necessary. You're gonna pause the video here and make sure that you have all of those things available to you. You have the packet open in a separate tab, writing utensil, material to write on, and you're ready to go. So for today's writing mini lesson, we're gonna be talking about using evidence that helps to prove your point. So we know that as writers, it's super important to include evidence in your paragraphs, but you should make sure that the evidence actually helps to support your assertion. You shouldn't just put in random evidence or evidence that half supports your assertion. You should always be looking for the very best evidence in the text to include. So that way, your reader is really getting your point and really understands your point because you're using only the best evidence from the text. So for today, we are going to read two samples of work that you previously did um, and that we pulled from fifth grade. And we're going to read both the topic sentence and the piece of evidence that these two samples used in order to prove their points. And we're going to be deciding whether or not um, what makes one sample stronger than the other sample based on how clearly their evidence helps to prove their point. So. The prompt that, that these samples responded to is below, and it said to explain how robots use their innovative ways to help humans. So the evidence that we're looking for is evidence that helps to prove whatever assertion the person made about how robots use their innovative ways to help humans. So right now, what I want you to do independently is I want you to read through samples one and two. And as you're reading through samples one and two, you're going to think about the evidence that they included and you're going to ask that same question. Does their evidence help to prove their point and is it the best evidence to prove their point? As you're reading samples one and two, you're going to jot down notes on your scratch paper that you're going to be prepared to share when you continue the video. So right now, you're going to read through samples one and two, jot down your notes, and come back ready to share your thoughts. Pause the video here and do that now. 
Okay, so we're gonna discuss your thoughts um, based on the work that you did. If you realize that you did not read through samples one and two and you did not jot down any notes about the evidence included, then you should go back and do that before continuing on with the video. So let's read through sample one together. Not only are robots helping people detect objects and pollution in water, they are also helping patients in hospitals. So that was this person's topic sentence. Based on this topic sentence, what point is this person trying to prove? Exactly, they're trying to prove that robots help patients in hospitals. So we need to make sure that their evidence actually connects back to their point of helping patients in hospitals. And we need to make sure that it does that so that we know it's strong evidence because it proves their point. Let's read their evidence next. A robot called Reba, short for Robot for Interactive Body Assistance, is aiding hospital victims who have a hard time getting in and out of bed. Reba can gently lift the patient out of bed and help him or her into a wheelchair. What do you guys think about this first sample's evidence? Did this sample clearly prove the assertion of robots helping patients in hospitals? Okay, I want you to hold on to that thought and jot down some notes based on what you just said if you didn't already. Let's take a look at the second sample. Robots use their innovative ways to help humans by helping them at home. So here we're gonna use the same strategy. Let's first pinpoint the argument that this person is trying to make. What, is, what are they trying to prove is a way that robots help humans? Exactly, they're saying that robots help humans by helping them at home. Okay, so as we're reading our evidence, what do we need to make sure that it does? Exactly, we need to make sure that it actually helps to prove this point that robots help humans at home. So let's read the evidence. The author says, Featured here are robots that have made new lately for the innovations. They help people at home or at work. You might be living or working with one of them one day. What do you think about that piece of evidence in sample number two? You should be asking yourself right now, does this evidence help to prove the assertion does it prove that robots are helping humans by helping them at home? Okay, so now I want you to think about what you just responded for sample one and sample two. Based on the work that we just did together, which sample would you say has stronger evidence and why? Think about that, answer the question, and pause the video here. Okay, so what do you guys think? Which sample do you think has stronger evidence? So if you said sample one has stronger evidence, I'm agreeing with you. Here are some of the points you should have mentioned in your explanation in order to prove why sample one has stronger evidence. In sample one, the evidence that is included connects directly back to the assertion that they made. Their assertion was that robots help patients in hospitals. So this person went into the text and found a specific piece of evidence that proved how exactly robots help patients in hospitals. Their evidence talks about the robot Reba and how it helps hospital victims who, help a hard, who have a hard time getting out of bed. And it says that Reba can gently lift patients out of bed and help them into a wheelchair. This evidence directly connects to their point and therefore it helps to prove their point by giving a specific example of a robot that helps 
patients in hospitals. The key here is that this person went back into the text looking for the best evidence to prove their point. They didn't just put a piece of evidence that proved that robots help people. They put a piece of evidence that showed exactly how robots help patients in hospitals. In comparison, sample two does not include evidence that connects back to their assertion. Their assertion was that robots help people at home. However, their evidence doesn't exactly explain any of the ways that robots help people at home. Instead, their evidence talks about generally robots helping people at home and then says that you might be living with a robot one day. But by telling the reader that they might be living with a robot one day, it does not help to prove how exactly robots help humans at home. This person should have gone into the text and looked for a specific way that robots help humans at home. For example, this isn't from the text, this is just something that I made up. A better piece of evidence could have been something that included how robots help people at home because they can clean dishes. Okay, well, if a robot is cleaning dishes, then it's helping the person at home because they don't have to worry about doing their dishes anymore. That piece of evidence would have been an example that proves this point. Because this person's evidence doesn't actually list a specific way that robots help people at home, it is not the best evidence to support this point. It actually takes away from the point and it does not help the essay get better. It makes it weaker. So, based on what we just talked about, if you were to give somebody advice on including evidence in their paragraphs, what advice would you give them to make sure that their evidence is always the best evidence and that it clearly proves their point? That was a really clear piece of advice that you gave. So the teaching point here is that whenever you are including evidence in your essays, you should make sure that your evidence directly connects to your assertion and that it helps to prove your point. If your evidence doesn't actually connect to your assertion or help to prove your assertion or your point correct, then it's not the best evidence for you to include in your paragraph and you should go back to the text and find a better piece of evidence. So that's the end of our mini lesson for today. What you are going to do now is you are gonna get started on writing or responding to a prompt based on the text that you read yesterday. So you should have an assignment in Google Classroom that includes the prompt for today. And if it doesn't include the prompt for today, then you can use this video to take a look at the prompt for today or the packet labeled Thursday, April 9th. Your prompt is asking you to write an essay based off of the passage that you read yesterday in reading class. The text is included at the bottom of this document for you. So if you need the text to include evidence, which you definitely do, you can look in Thursday, April 9th's writing materials, scroll down to page four, and the text is there for you to use. You should be writing your essay in your Google Classroom assignment. So right now, you're gonna go ahead and open up your Google Classroom writing assignment for Thursday, April 9th, and you are going to respond to the prompt for yesterday's text. As you are writing your essay, I want you to focus on including strong evidence to help prove your points throughout your essay. By pushing yourself to do this, you'll be learning from our mini lesson today and showing that you, one, carefully watch this video, and two, that you're understanding exactly what your evidence should do in your body paragraphs. As your teachers take a look at your writing for today, they will be paying special attention to your evidence and how well it helps to prove your point. That's the end of today's writing video for today. You should go ahead and get started on your essay. 
It is due at 7 o'clock p.m., so make sure that you have a fully developed essay by then, and that includes an introduction, body paragraphs, and a conclusion. See you tomorrow.